In the last video, we talked about goals in language learning and why it's important to have them, but how they can also bring you down if you don't set them in the right way and how to set them so that they don't bring you down, so that they build you up and do positive things for you. In this video, I'm going to talk about my personal goals for Swedish in the year 2020, next year, and why I've set them that way so that hopefully you can see that process in action. Hi guys, my name's Lamont. Welcome to Days of French and Swedish. It's a channel about language learning in general, not just about learning those two languages. Those just happen to be my languages at the moment. So if you're learning a language or you like the idea of learning a language, then hang around and subscribe. Next year will be the 20s. That's kind of insane. But at the time of recording this, there's still more than a month left of 2019, okay? Do not wait on your goals. There is no reason to waste a month if you're not doing anything else before you start on your language learning goals. You can start on them now. You can get a head start on 2020 if that's the way you want to see it. My personal goals for 2020 will start with Swedish. That is in January and February it will be Swedish. But for the end of 2019, I decided to focus on French as much as I possibly could with 98 days left in the year, I said that I was going to do 250 hours of French before the end of the year. I'm not quite hitting that, but I'm getting very, very close. I've done more than two hours a day. That's on average. That's not every single day, but on average, I've hit more than two hours a day. And it will mean, or it does almost already mean, that my French and my Swedish are on very similar levels. Now, on the one hand, that feels great because really not very long ago at all, I would have definitely said that Swedish was my superior language out of those two, right? And I speak Swedish pretty well and I speak French less well. That's what I would have said. But very soon, that will it will be the case that I speak both of those reasonably well. So on the one hand, that feels great. On the other hand, it's sort of disappointing for me because I know that my Swedish isn't really at the level that it should be after three years. Now, there are various reasons for this. One of the big ones, in fact, the main one, is that when I started learning Swedish, I had no idea how to learn a language. I had no idea what I was doing. I thought I was doing a good job because I was doing a lot. I was motivated to do it and that's always good. But I just was bumbling around. I had no idea what I was doing. When I came to French, I had a bit more of an idea of what worked and what didn't. I still had a lot to learn. I still have a lot to learn in terms of motivating myself and setting goals and all that kind of stuff. But at least I had the advantage of knowing that some of the activities that I'd sunk time into with Swedish were a complete waste of time. And I knew that. So I didn't do those with French, whereas I did a lot of those with Swedish. So even though I've been learning Swedish for three years, a lot of that time has been spent on French. A lot of it has been spent just not learning, just going, oh, I can't be bothered today because I had no idea how to motivate myself or to set goals. And a lot of it has been spent doing the wrong thing. So in terms of active time, actually, what's the word? <laughs> productive time is the word I'm looking for. In terms of productive time, I've probably spent almost as much time on French as I have Sweet. And all this stuff that I've learned about self-discipline and overcoming resistance and goal setting, this all only started about a year ago for me and only started taking roots in my life about eight months ago. So, and for most of that time, I've been studying French, not Swedish. So that means that this stuff has taken, has had more time to take root in my language learning in French than it has in Swedish. So in many ways, in like sort of technical and kind of grammar ways, my French is actually better than my Swedish, even though my Swedish conversation is probably more natural and I feel more comfortable doing it. That's just because I've had a lot of conversation in Swedish. But in terms of reading and sort of more difficult things that I find less fun, I guess, French is the superior language. So my Swedish goals for 2020 are, put simply, to do lots of the kind of stuff that I never did in my first couple of years of learning Swedish. In short, input. Now, I have my issues with the 
input crowd. I agree with what they say, okay? I do think that learning a language requires a lot of input. What I have my issues with is what they don't say or what they very seldom say and how they frame certain things so that it appears as though they're saying something that they're not really saying. And one day when I'm more advanced at making videos, when I'm better at this process, I will make a video explaining my issues with the input crowd and I'm just, I'm not ready for it yet because it's a very complex video. But in terms of where I'm at with my Swedish, it is mostly what I need right now. However, there's still the question of motivation because I was really only a highly motivated Swedish learner for my first year of doing it. Most of the Swedish that I've learned was in the first year. Okay, and the problem after that became motivation because as you get better at a language, or at least for me, as you get better at it, the hill gets steeper. You want to carry on up the hill less and less and it gets harder and harder to reach just the slightly higher level. And it's always more fun for me to start new languages. New languages are novel, they're fun. No expectations are placed on you when you start a new language, which is why I would prefer to take up a new language than to even carry on studying one that I've been doing for a week. But obviously that gets no one anywhere. You can't learn anything of use in a week so you need to carry on beyond that. And if you want to get really good at the language, like I do with Swedish and French, you need to carry on when it gets really hard. So we come back to that question of motivation. What am I going to do about this next year? What I've come up with is something that I'd like you to think about for your own language learning and your own life in general. When anything that you need to do is exhausting, tiring, boring, whatever, find a way to make that task a reward in itself. Now this is not always easy to do. I know that some tasks they're just they've just got to be done and there's nothing much you can do to make that task more fun. But one fairly standard example that I've heard is to listen to music that you like when you exercise and to only allow yourself to listen to that music when you exercise. It's just a way of making the thing that you don't want to do seem that little bit more enticing. And like most things that you don't want to do, the hard part is starting. The hard part is actually not continuing. Once you're there, you'll find it's not that bad. And the same goes for language learning. You often don't want to start on that thing that you know would be really beneficial. You just don't want to do it. But when you do start, you find you actually don't mind it and you get in a bit of a flow. So what I'm doing for Swedish is this book and some other books like it. I've been wanting to read them forever. Now this is the English version. This is a sequel to a book I read in January this year. It was one of the best novels I've ever read and this is the sequel and it's meant to be just as good. I've been wanting to read it all year but for various reasons I haven't and as some of you may know, I gave up reading in English not that long ago to give myself more time to spend in my target languages. So, I've just ordered this book and a bunch of others like it that I've also wanted wanting I've also wanted to read in Swedish and not the very smallest ones that you can get in Sweden. These are the smallest kinds of books you can get in Sweden. They're typically very cheap and they're obviously cheaper to ship, but they don't get me excited about reading them. There's very little space and the font is very, very small. So I ordered the slightly bigger ones, which once you add in shipping can be almost twice as much. And I also ordered the audiobooks, by the way. Now, when you consider that a lot of these books that I'm ordering are either translated from English into Swedish or another language into Swedish, and obviously they've also been translated into English, and I think all of them are available at my library. This is far from the cheapest way to do it. This is a ridiculously expensive way to read these books. But I've taught myself the habit of not always comparing the price of things to what they physically are, but rather the enjoyment and the benefit that they offer. And I know that these books are on their way to me as we speak, and they're not the really small ones that I just don't have a lot of lust to read. They're the slightly bigger ones. And I have the audio books, which are, I love book audio books in your target language because I love just how clear they are and everything. In short, I'm pumped for Swedish again. I'm pumped to read these books in Swedish, which will be hard. It will be really difficult for me. Obviously, it's much easier to read them in English. 
but that would not benefit me from a language learning point of view. Whereas this activity will be exciting for me, it will be it will motivate me to get into Swedish and particularly into that aspect of it that I don't really like, that input aspect of just taking things in for ages without actually having conversations. But I'll be excited to do it. And that's a big, it doesn't really matter what the books cost. I mean, obviously, if they cost like hundreds of dollars, that would not be good. But they cost a bit more than normal. And that's okay because they're offering me an experience and a benefit that I can't really get elsewhere. Now, will that motivation, that enthusiasm, that pumpedness fade a little bit as I actually sit down and try and read the book? Yeah, for sure, right? You sit down, and you're like, ugh, this would be so much easier in English. It will fade. But I know from experience that you can get into a rhythm and a flow and it feels good because you know you should be doing it. It's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like running when it hurts, but you're like, I know that this is good for me. And that's what reading or any activity in your target language that you don't like, that is difficult for you, is like. But at the same time, I do like it. I like it enough because I want to read these books to continue doing it. So my Swedish goal for 2020 is to read six books. And I was going to say the six books that I ordered, but I already have some here that I've never read because I ordered them way too early and they were way too advanced and I have no idea what I was thinking, thinking that I could read these, but I will be able to read them by the end of 2020 once I've read these other simpler books. And I think it will be really enjoyable. Obviously it will be hard, as I've said, but it will be enjoyable. And that's the balance that you're always trying to find in your language learning. What is difficult, but just enjoyable enough that you can keep doing it? Because the things that are too difficult, you'll give up. The things that are not enjoyable, you will give up. And the things that are not beneficial, you might as well not do. As for my other Swedish goals for 2020, I essentially have six months in Swedish because I'll be spending the other six months on French, maybe a third language. That's a whole different video, so I'll get into that at a different time. But I'm only going to be spending six months of the year in Swedish in total, and I've got to read six books. So obviously that's a book a month. I calculate that on average, the books will take me about 20 hours each, and that's assuming that I speed up as I go. So I think that during those six months, an average of an hour a day is suitably ambitious. Now we're talking 20 hours a month of reading, so that gives me the remaining third of the time to do my other things. That's good for conversations. I might want to get into a bit of writing. I might have a tutor set me an assignment about one of the books I've read and we'll mark it together or something. But most of the time will be spent in reading. Now, the reason I'm capping it at an hour a day is news time. Hej och välkomna till nyheter på dålig svenska. I don't know why I did that. My wife's gonna have a baby in May and we already have a child. He will be nine by the time the baby is born. So we're gonna have two children. I also have basically a full-time job. It's not officially a full-time job, but it's very near to it. And obviously I maintain and make videos for this channel. And I also have a second channel. So I will have plenty to do an hour of Swedish a day in the six months that I'll be doing it, I think is suitably ambitious and it will benefit me but I don't think it's too much and I don't think it's too little. And you might be thinking that that remaining third that I mentioned where I might be doing some writing or maybe some speaking and an assignment with a tutor and stuff like that sounds a little bit vague, but I already have my reading goal, which is not vague at all. It's very specific and I've even worked out how long it will take. In total, when you compare my goals in Swedish compared to some people's goals of like N2 proficiency in Japanese or C1 proficiency in German. My goals are crazy specific and they need to be or they don't work. It's just, that's just the fact of it. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to take a pen and paper. You know, you can send an email to yourself or write it in the comments here, whatever. A pen and paper is the best if you've got one handy, if you still live in that era with a pen and paper. Write down a time-based goal for your language in 2020. Now, it might be that you speak more than one language or whatever. Then you might have to do a little bit of a map of when you're going to do this. It might be more complicated for you. But if you've got one language that you're focused on and you want to focus on that more in 2020, take a pen and paper, write down how much time are you going to spend on it? 
how much does that mean per day? Like how many minutes per day? Even if you work out that that's only 14 minutes per day, which I've said in another video is not enough, but work out what that means for you in your life. Is it possible? Is it possible for you to do more? How much can you get achieved in that time? If you don't do that, then you are asking to not live up to your goals. You're asking to not reach them. You wanna be specific with them and work out how they're going to impact you. If you're already languid, if, <laughs> If you're already languishing, if you're languishing in turmoil, and if you'll be continuing in 2020, unlike me, to learn the same language that you're already learning now, then you can get started right now. Set a goal for the rest of the year. Get started on it now. You don't need to wait for next year. And certainly given that a lot of people have holidays towards the end of December, you can set it as higher than you might normally, and you can feel really good going into 2020 and make it more likely that you'll succeed with your goals in 2020. So guys, thank you for watching this far through a video that was kind of all about me in a way, but I really hope that it didn't come off like that because I, what I want it to be is for you to set goals that are gonna work for you. Remember when you're setting your goals that you always want to be a better version of yourself. You don't wanna be any version of anyone else. You don't wanna be someone who speaks seven languages if that's not you and where you're at at the moment. That's not me and where I'm at at the moment. So I just hope that you could get something out of it. Let me know what your goals are for 2020 or for the rest of 2019 in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.